Hey, this is Digital by Computing. We're gonna talk about how to create a storage pool on a EMC Unity. So let's log in right now and have a look at how to do it. We're gonna just have a look at how to create a storage pool. So the, the way that you would create your, um, your pool is by clicking on the plus up here and I can then create my pool and call it whatever I want. So I'm just going to call it test pool. This is a test pool. And next. Then you got your different tiers of disks. So uh, certain disks are faster than others. So you see that there are three main capacities, extreme, performance, and capacity tier. And you can see the actual different types in here. So your extreme performance are your SAS flash disks. So your your solid state disks, obviously there are no moving parts. So the capacity, uh, not the capacity, the speed is gonna be a lot faster than other disks. You've also got your standard performance tier, which are your standard SAS disks. And then your capacity tier, which is your nearline SAS or even your SATA disks, which are slightly slower. You'll see that here, I've just got performance tier disks that are available. So I've got 12 unused disks with a total capacity of around 19 terabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my performance tier of disks, which is the disks that I want to use um, for creating this pool. You'll see that by default, it is defined itself as a RAID 5, which is a four plus one, so one failover, with a maximum usable capacity of 12.8 terabytes. So even though I've got 19 terabytes, it's gonna only use 12.8, because it obviously needs some disks for redundancy. You can go ahead and change your actual RAID configuration straight from here. You can go to a RAID 5, a RAID 6, or a RAID 10, or a RAID 10, whatever you need to call it. You can also drop down what sort of RAID 5 configurations you want. You can actually customize it. I can select RAID 10 and I can customize it as well. So we're just gonna leave it as a RAID 5, which is a four plus one and okay, and then click on next. And then in here, I actually select what drives I want to use. So what disks out of the available disk do I want to use? I don't have to use all of them, or I can use all of the ones that are available. So in the drop down list here, you'll see that it's automatically gonna allocate a certain amount of disks. So I can add none of the 12 drives, I can add five of the 12, or I can add 10 of the 12. Now the reason it's doing this is based on my RAID configuration. So it's going to pick the, the amount of disks that are gonna be relevant and best suited for your RAID configuration that you've used. So we're, what we'll do here is we're just gonna say, add five of my 12, which is gonna use a capacity of 6.4 terabytes. It's gonna be using a total of five drives with a total of 6.4 terabytes of usable space. You can create a capacity profile name, which lets you essentially uh, you know, talk to VMware and using VVOLs or your virtual volumes based on storage provisioning, um, if you do want to use that capacity. Uh, we're not gonna use this in this instance, but it is a nice feature to use if you are wanting to use VMware uh, for uh, virtual volumes. You'll see a summary here. I'm using performance TF RAID 5, using my SAS disks, and I'm using five of them with a capacity of 6.4, and I've got my used fast cache is no. Now this is mainly because I don't have any of my uh, solid states or my, you know, my flash disks in this particular pool. And go ahead and click on finish. So there's now gonna give me a summary of what is happening. So you'll see that it's uh, gonna go ahead and create that pool, assign those disks into my pool, and then they'll be usable so that I can create my LUNs, or I can go and create my particular SIFs or NFS shares uh, on top of that. So that is complete, and you'll see that it's got a nice tick. If it doesn't have a tick and it doesn't say 100%, you've had a problem and you'll have to go back and diagnose what has happened. So we can click on close and you'll see now that, that I have a new pool called test pool with a usable disk size of 6.4 and obviously my free is 6.4. Also, you can see here it's only got the one tier because it's got only one speed of disks 
if there was different speed of disks in there. So if there was a mixture of SAS, uh, flash of standard SAS or of Neoline SAS, uh, you're gonna see different tiers as well as how many drives, etc. You'll see that there are no data stores, no file systems and no LUNs created yet because this is just a pool, essentially a container that I'm going to use to allocate or create LUNs or file systems within this particular pool. All right, so this is uh, created a pool, but there's nothing actually utilizing the space of this pool as yet. So that is how you create a pool on the Unisphere. We're now gonna go into the different sections here of your storage. So there are two main areas, block and file. So block, we are talking SAN, file, we are talking NAS. Block, we're talking about LUNs and using connectivity such as iSCSI and fiber channel. And you can use that to, you know, to allocate to VMware, uh, to set up as data stores, etc., cetera, um, as raw storage. Uh, and also you can use a file setup, which is you creating a file system where you can allocate and create SMB shares, NFS shares, and I can essentially make this as a uh, file server or a file repository uh, where I can have computers on my network connecting to certain shares and, and folders that I've created directly within my Unisphere. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel Digital by Computing just on the button there for more videos.